welcome to the call. This is a fantastic opportunity to hear from somebody who has done it all. I want to introduce you to Dr. Slatisa Kralhevich. She is the author of Borderless Leadership. Uh, Dr. Slatisa is a results-oriented dynamic executive with diverse experience covering 30 countries and six continents. She has managed uh, companies from startups to large corporations. She has been in advisory boards, on boards. She has worked in academia. She has worked as a consultant. She has managed her own companies. She has been a subject matter and advisor on emerging markets. She has written for famous magazines. She has been a speaker. She has been a panelist and moderator at international conferences. And she has gathered all her knowledge into a book called Borderless Leadership, Global Skills for Personal and Business Success. Her experience includes structuring, staffing, launching new international business units, merging um, units or companies, identifying and managing hidden risks, uh, leading company-wide programs, negotiating with foreign government officials, selecting partners and vendors. I, I can go on and on and on and on, but I don't wanna take you from listening to herself explaining a little bit about what her book is about and how she came to write this book. Slatisa, welcome to the program. Thank you, Alicia. I'm delighted to be here today. Uh, Slatisa, can you tell us how did you um, come with uh, this idea about the book that you wrote? Uh, yeah, actually what prompted me to write this book is that when I talk or work with people in, in the West, in industrialized countries, what I detect is a big concern about their abilities to succeed in today's world. They're concerned that the world is not what it used to be, and they feel a little bit pessimistic about uh, success. But when I travel the world and I talk with people in emerging markets, the spirit is totally different. They are optimistic and excited about the future. They know that the world today is better than it used to be. They have more access to education, better sanitary conditions, more access to healthcare, and they are really eager to become part of the global marketplace. So there is a, a gap, a disconnect between the way the West is looking at the world and the way emerging markets are looking at the world today. And what the book does is to help by providing a framework that explain the changes in the global market and help transform that pessimism into optimism by providing tools to help people develop the global skills that they need to regain the confidence in their, their ability to succeed anywhere in the world. So in, in your view, you, you think Western companies are not only more pessimistic, but they're also not doing, um, not approaching globalization correctly? Uh, that's true. Actually, the Western companies are doing rather poorly these days, and they have been doing poorly for the last uh, 15 or more years. The list of companies that are failing in emerging market is really staggering. Uh, companies that are very well known, for instance, Walmart, Home Depot, JCPenney, Target, Best Buy, they have a history of failing over and over again when they try to go to places like uh, Brazil or Mexico, Germany, Japan, China. And the reason behind that is that they are still stuck in the, bus in the business practices that they used in the last century. They have not been able to adapt to the new conditions and the new way of doing business. So that's what is, um, is really, there is a huge need for companies to change their mindset, the way they look at the world and find more effective ways of um, achieving success. Now, one thing that I, that I notice in your book is that we shouldn't really wait for the company to change the strategy. So uh, I love your book because I've, traveled to many countries. I've tried to do business in some countries without success, and I've been successful in others. 
And I thought this is a book that a person could read and start implementing changes for immediate results instead of waiting for the large corporation or, or, or headquarters to tell them this is what you need to do. Uh, could you tell us a little bit more about the focus of the book? Uh, yes, I, in, in the book, what, we, what I try to convey is that we have to modernize our way of thinking. And the fundamental reason that we are stuck in the past century is that when we went to school, for instance, we learned that the world is divided in a fixed number of continents, and every continent has a number of countries. And we learned that each one of these countries have a group of people that behave similarly. They, have, they share the same language, the same nationality, the same uh, taste and preferences, but every country is different from us. So we are conditioned to think that everybody is different. And by doing that, we have a mental block that says we don't understand the people. We don't un if we go to Europe or to Asia or to the Middle East, we go with a concept that we don't understand them. We came up with culture books that will help uh, business people understand how to do business with the Japanese or how to do business with the French. Yeah. And that is an obsolete concept because today there has been an explosion of population in Asia and the Middle East primarily, and migration has increased. And because it's so easy these days to uh, travel around the world and to even send money back and forth between countries, the world has become a multicultural pot. Uh, it's no longer true that you go to France, for instance, and you expect to do business with the French. In reality, you can be doing business with Middle Easterns. In France, you can be doing business with the Middle Easterns, with um, Russians, with Indians, with a variety of different uh, cultures. So reading books is no longer enough. Yeah. Now we, need, we live in a borderless society, and what we need is borderless leadership. And the key there is to stop thinking that we are different and focus on focusing on the similarities between people. That's, I, I believe, is the, the big transformation in, in our minds. I, I love that concept. I really, uh, it really resonates with me because I also think that we're more similar than different. Uh, and, uh, and then I wonder, what is the role of the universities? Do you think our universities are doing a good job at preparing students for for this borderless uh, leadership or to succeed in any uh, country, I guess? Unfortunately, no. We are not doing a very good job at the university level in training our young people to be the leaders of the, of the future. Uh, IBM uh, had a very interesting uh, study. They interviewed uh, 4,500 students uh, from 40 countries, including the United States. And they asked them if they felt that their college education was preparing them to succeed in the world today. And interestingly enough, 60% of the students, six out of 10 people, including Americans, said that the college education is not preparing them to take advantage of emerging markets. They don't feel confident that they know how to deal with the world today. So that's a very um, telling a picture, and we have to take that very seriously. The other thing that we need to teach to, uh, to succeed today is um, trust, how to develop trust and collaboration with, other, with people different from us in, in other countries. And um, talking about data, GE, for instance, also ran a survey among 3,000 executives around the world and they asked them if they thought that their companies were able to innovate and change their business practices today through collaborating with foreign companies. And the results were so interesting, Alicia, it's incredible. Uh, they found out that about 50% of executives in countries like Germany, China, Brazil, and Sweden said that yes, that they were innovating 
and changing their business practices by collaborating with foreign companies. In contrast with that, American executives were able, only one third, 33% of American executives were able to say that they're innovating and adopt, uh, adopting new business practices by collaborating with other companies. So there is a huge lack of trust or the ability to build trust and collaborate with other companies. And I can give you examples of companies that are, are failing because they're unable to um, understand that other uh, companies can really contribute to their success. So let, let me interrupt you for a moment then. What is the worst thing that happens when, when people are not prepared? What has been your experience? And I wonder if you can give me a, 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 an example of something that you did that was different. Well, um, going to the concept that instead of thinking that we are different from other people and we focus on similarities between human beings, I had the opportunity to work um, in a private uh, enterprise in Saudi Arabia. And I have never been to Saudi Arabia. I knew that this is the most uh, traditional Middle Eastern countries. And of course, women have a lot of restrictions in the workplace. So, but I went because I, I really needed to, or wanted to understand how they conduct business and how they make decisions. And the first thing that became clear to me is that my colleagues, they were all Arabs from different uh, countries in, uh, in the Middle East and uh, North Africa. They were very uncomfortable about having a woman in the workplace. And, and, and this is, uh, and anecdotally, I can tell you that um, for the first several weeks, when the president of the, of the organization was um, uh, having meeting with uh, his executive teams, and I was the only female in that executive team, he couldn't actually go 10 uh, minutes or 15 minutes into the meeting until somebody interrupted him and said, I cannot concentrate on what you're saying because I don't know what she is doing here. And the first time that this happens, I look around and said, who is she? Who came in? And then I realized that it was me. They were talking about me as if I wasn't in the, in the room. But I, instead of getting frustrated and saying, generalizing and saying Arab men don't like women in the workplace, I decided to concentrate on the similarities of human beings. And I was able to connect and build trust and collaboration by working one-on-one -on -one and listening to their concerns and explaining what my role was. And they were so uh, acceptable of me being there that I became the leader of choice to, um, to help with very complex projects that needed to be addressed. So that's one example where I was actually in, in, in place, yeah, seeing these uh, kind of reactions. And in, I held, it was the opportunity for me to go beyond the external differences, yeah. the way they dressed, the way they spoke, their culture, their habits, and connect with them on an individual basis. That's very, very interesting. That's very, very interesting. Yeah, I can, I can see how um, we don't really have the opportunity to explore that in, uh, in an academic setting because we are usually located in one place. Um, what do you recommend executives or college students to do to increase their chances of success in, a, in this borderless society? Well, um, yeah, one thing that I will recommend is that they drop the concept that they had before about doing business with a culture. Okay. And concentrate on doing business with an individual. And what I would like to say is that we know how to do that. We just don't realize that we do it. We don't know what we know. Yeah. And I can explain that by saying, for instance, if here in the United States, we, uh, we are working in an office and we find that a woman, for instance, is a very difficult person. And our boss is a man which, who is a terrible boss. Right? Just to give you an example. Because we are used to our society, 
we don't generalize and we don't say all women are difficult or all men are terrible bosses. But when we go to other country, we said all the French are this way and all the Japanese are this way. If we are able to realize that that is the wrong approach in today's market, then instead of going to meet with the Germans or Japanese or um, uh, Saudis, we said, I'm going to meet people just like you and me. Yeah? And I'm going to connect with them individually just as, as I do at home. Since the moment that we're born, when we are toddlers and, and children, we start uh, understanding how to deal with people on an individual basis. We know how to develop the um, intuition which is nothing more than data in our brain that allows us to make decisions without thinking. Mm -hmm. We develop an intuition to know who we can trust and who we don't want to be friends with. But when we, we work uh, or we travel abroad, we leave that knowledge behind. And we said, we don't understand these people. So my advice is don't leave home without that. Think no and be confident that you know how to connect with people one by one, and you will be surprised at how much success, how much trust and collaboration you can build with people that you meet for the first time. There is no strangers in the world. I think, I think that's a very refreshing and new approach. That's one of the things I love about the book. It, it restates faith in our capacity to connect and to get things done. I'm very appreciative of that. Let me ask you one more question. Is this book only relevant for people who want to do business or does it have any implication in personal relationships and personal success, traveling or just understanding other cultures? Um, I think that absolutely it's, um, it's for everyone. Uh, the principles and tools have universal applications. And uh, for ex I can use some examples, for instance, from the perspective of women, uh, it gives tips and tools on how to manage in male-dominated societies. It also uh, provides um, advice on how to negotiate when you are in politically unstable regions, which are particularly stressful, mm -hmm. or to dealing with life-threatening situations. And that can be when you are traveling by, for pleasure or in business. You can be involved in a situation that is totally unexpected. Okay. If you are thinking, for instance, in relocating your family, it also gives you tips for that, or how to manage a workforce that doesn't have the skills uh, that we take for granted here in the United States. And for the general public, it really helps you to surround yourself or to learn the skills that allows you to surround yourself with people that you can trust and avoid those that may take advantage of you. So I think it really is very universal. Could you tell us where can we find the book? Could you show the book a little bit better and tell us where you can find that book? Uh, the book is available in print and in uh, ebook in uh, Amazon and in Barnes and Noble. And um, you can also find more information on my website, which is andersfrontiergroup.com. There's a lot of information there as well. And also contact information if somebody would like to reach me with any questions i'll be more than happy to to address them good well thank you very very much thank you all for being here and i hope you have learned a lot of lessons from borderless leadership goodbye mm -hmm.